Welcome to the second part of uh, section 5.3, 5.3b. And we have spent some time now writing some formulas of some uh, ionic compounds and naming some ionic compounds. And so now we're going to kick it up a notch. We're going to take it a little to a higher level. And it's a little tougher now because what we're going to deal with are these things called polyatomic ions. And the word poly just means many. So these are ions that have more than one atom. And I've got three uh listed right here for you. This one right here is called sulfate. It's it's composed of an S and four oxygens and it's got a minus two charge. Now if you were to draw it out it would look something like this. We're gonna worry about drawing these out with the number of electrons and everything but it would look like something like that. So what I want you to do is think about this as one entity. All right. Don't think about it as four O's and, and one S. I want you to treat it just like, let's say, a sulfur that has a minus two charge. All right. Or or an oxygen that has a minus two charge. Because if you start getting worried about, oh, there's sulfur, there's oxygen, there's minus twos and four, it gets messy. Here's another one, ammonium. It's the only polyatomic ion that we're going to deal with this year that is positive. It looks something like this. Okay. And again, I want you to think of it as one entity that has a positive charge. It's when we're when we're naming ions and we're writing formulas and we're figuring out how many of this and how many of that we have to deal with, treat it the same way as you would treat a potassium ion. Okay, the next one is hydroxide OH with a minus charge. And again, same thing goes. We're treating these as one ion. Don't get don't worry about the fact that there's more than one atom. I can't stress that enough because you're going to see this quite a while and this part does confuse people, all right? Now, the the real challenging part about this and we're going to use flashcards and do things that will that'll hopefully help us out is you've got to memorize these polyatomic ions, right? I'm not a huge fan, fan of memorizing, but the problem is, in order to speak like a chemist, you've got to know the, the words. And it's no different than a foreign language class, where you've got to learn some of the basic root words in order to speak it. So we've got to learn these polyatomic ions. And I'll give you a handout, but here it is. Look at those. I believe there's 26 there. All right? It looks like a lot. But I'll tell you the way to do this, the best way to do this, is to make some flashcards. Right? Put the name on one side, put the the formula on the other, and start working at it. Take take five minutes, whatever you can, and do them. Bust those cards out at lunch. Start doing it. Trust me, you will not be the first Wilson kid that did that. If you're watching TV and you've got commercials, bust out these cards. I promise you, if you do it for a while, uh, it, these will eventually stick in your head, but you've got to do something like that. That's one of the best ways that I know to get these in your brain. So really spend some time with that. Make some flashcards, and then uh, you'll find that this whole naming polyatomic ions and formulas and everything is going to be a lot easier. All right? So let's talk about a couple of the different polyatomic ions. We have a group that are called the oxyanions. Now, you can probably imagine they are uh, uh, polyatomic ions that have oxygen in them. And here are some of the most common. Right? There's SO4, which is a sulfate. And there's SO3, which is a sulfite. Here's an NO3, which is a nitrate, and an NO2, which is a nitrite. Typically, one of the atoms will form an oxyion with two or four uh, different oxygens and there's really no easy way to look at your periodic table and figure it out like we do with some of the charges you just kinda have to memorize it so you the nice thing is a sulfur uh, if it's sulfide it's minus two if it's sulfate it's minus two and if it's sulfide it's minus two so that's kind of a nice thing you don't have to worry about that charge you just know that sulfur is always minus two nitrate nitrite uh, even though nitrogen is always a minus three when it's a nitride uh, it's a it's a minus one uh, for reasons that'll make sense later when we start doing these things called Lewis dot structures. All right. Now, how am I going to tell the difference between uh, a polyatomic ion that has three oxygens versus one that has two oxygens? 
All right. Well, you might have noticed these endings. One ends in A-T-E and one ends in I-T-E. All right. So that brings us to the rule. You have an 8 ending for the ion with the most oxygens and an I ending for the ones with the least oxygen. Now, it would be wonderful if this rule was 8 for 3 oxygens and 8 for 2 oxygens, but you'll notice with the example up here, it's not. Nitrate and nitrite. Nitrogen forms an oxyion with 3 oxygens and 2 oxygens. The one that gets the most uh, has uh, the 8 ending. Sulfate, on the other hand, forms 2 oxyions anions with four oxygens and three oxygens. Again, the one that gets the most gets the eight ending, and the one that gets the le has the least gets the eight ending. It would be great if eight meant three and eight meant two and stuff like that, but it doesn't, which again leads me back to this point. You really just got to spend some time memorizing these, and uh, it'll come to you, I promise you. It's just going to take a little bit of time. All right, on to our next thing, because it gets even a little more confusing. Okay, halogens, the fa my fa favorite uh, chemical family, um, make oxyanions with four different ox oxygens. All right, so for example, here's, here's one with one oxygen, right? Two oxygens, three oxygens, four oxygen. How in the world can we keep track of that? Well, all we know is eight means the most and eight means the least. Well, that leads us to two other uh, terms, or in this case, prefixes, and that is the hypo and the per. And as you can probably figure out just by looking up that, hypo means the fewest number of oxygen. And then per means the highest. So here we have the the fewest, the absolute fewest. And I will tell you this: hypos all always used, at least from what uh, what I can think of, is always used with one. And um, per per unfortunately is not always four because there's a peroxide. But but if you see hypo, it always means one. All right. So. What we do with this one is we have one oxygen. There's four possibles. We have hypo, which means the fewest, right? And then it ends in ite. And then we just have plain chlorite. And then we have chlorate. And then now the most, which is four, and there's a per. I know it's a little confusing because obviously we have SO4, right? Here's sulfate. And notice it's not called sulfate. Why is that? Well, because sulfur only makes two uh, oxyanions, but the halogens make four. So, in other words, I could have BrO, BrO2, BrO3, and BrO4. Now, I will say this. As far as memorizing goes or anything like that, they, the nice thing about this is that they retain their charge. In other words, you'll notice they all have a minus one charge. And if you think about the halogens, what charge do the halogens always have? Minus one. So that's not something you really have to memorize. You just have to be aware that any halogen or its oxyanion Or oxy has a minus one charge. All right, so there you go. That's almost it. I know you're eagerly waiting to see what's next, but here we go. Here's the other thing you might see, and this is kind of rare, but I want you to be aware of it because you will see it. Sometimes there will be a hydrogen involved. And it's always put in front of one of those polyatomic ions. And if it is, it's nothing to panic about. All we do is say the word. So this, if you look on your uh, chart, you have this thing right here. This is called phosphate. It's the only one we're going to know that has a minus 3 charge. Well, if a hydrogen were to attach to that, that thing would be called See the hydrogen right there? It would be called hydrogen phosphate. Now, if two hydrogens attached to it, that would be di, di meaning two, hydrogen phosphate. Right? What's, 
What's important that you realize, though, is what it does to the charge. Phosphate has a minus 3 charge. Hydrogen phosphate has a minus 2 charge. And dihydrogen phosphate has a minus 1 charge. And if you think about that, hydrogen usually is a plus 1, right? So you add a plus 1 <coughs> excuse me, to minus 3, you get minus 2, and so on and so on. So what would you call uh, these two right here? Just pause the video, think for a second. All right, hopefully you would call this hydrogen sulfate. Okay, and this one would be called hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so there we have it. Now I will say this, back in the days, they used to anything with hydrogen front. They used to call. They used to put the prefix bi, bicarbonate. So you may see bicarbonate somewhere in text or worksheets or things. Don't let it bother you. It's just good old hydrogen carbonate. All right. So now, here, those are the rules for the polyatomic ions. Let's go ahead and write some formulas and write some names and see how we do. You have this sheet right here. Look at it, pause the video, and uh, definitely look at your polyatomic ion sheet and try and come up with the names of each of these. Okay, how'd you do? Well, hopefully you wrote for this one, this first one, potassium, because there's potassium, right? And then this thing, uh, CR207, look what it is over here. It's dichromate. Right, and this is the part where people get stuck because they want to go potassium chromium oxide. But you've got to get to the point where you can recognize, remember, this is an entity all by itself. It's one thing. So that's potassium dichromate. Okay, what about this one? Lithium chlor. Oops. All right. This one. Iron. Whoa. What do I know about iron? Where's iron? It's in the transition, right? Did you use a Roman numeral? We've got to use a Roman numeral. Well, what's the what's the charge on a ClO3? It's always a minus, right? And there happens to be three of them. So that must mean we have a total of a minus three charge here. I've got to have a plus three. Okay, so that's going to be iron carbonate. Okay, this next one, sodium sulfate. So let's go the other way now. Let's go ahead and find or write the formula for these. All right, lead four chromate. What does that four mean? Okay, some of you still believe that that Roman numeral tells you how many, but it doesn't. It tells me the charge, right? So that's a that's a lead with a plus four charge and chromate. Wow, let's look on our polyatomic ion sheet. Chromate is right there. It's CrO four with a minus two charge. So um, it's going to be Pb, and then I'm going to use a parenthesis CrO four. Two, okay. Now I use that parentheses because I definitely can't write this. Right? That would say there's 42 O's. And it's kind of like if I want to times 5 times X uh, plus Y, I do this. Right? Use a parentheses. So there comes that algebra thing popping up again. Okay? So we're going to use a parentheses when we need more than one polyatomic ion. Right, on to the next one, potassium hypochlorite. Ooh, hypo, what did hypo mean? Hypo meant uh, the fewest, right? So it's K C L O. This is minus one, this is plus one, not too bad. Magnesium's got a plus two charge. Nitrate's got a minus one charge. How many of these am I going to need? I'm going to need two, right? Okay, so MG. Now, since I'm going to need two of a polyatomic ion, I've got to use a parentheses. Sodium peroxide. 
I know I went fast. I know this might be a little confusing. Please bring your questions to class. We'll go over it. And we're going to spend some time with this, and I promise you'll get good. But make those flashcards. They are super important. All right, see you next time.